cyclist versus motorist. And to discuss this in great detail, we've got a guy that rides the Great Ocean Road most days on a push bike, Billy Joe Shearsby. Thank you very much, folks. I'm glad you've brought me in just for this specific question. Uh, I do ride that road fairly often, and I will say it's not the widest road, and nothing drives me crazier than when drivers in particular, truck drivers, just go whooshing past you. Uh, you know, I'm doing my best to stay over, but there's a lot, as we know, there's a lot of uh, debris on the, on, on the side of the road. There's UDL cans. UDL cans, well, especially down there. A lot of UDL cans, yes. mm, condom wrappers, thumbtacks. Have you noticed as you get closer to Colac, the concentration of UDL cans? Goes up considerably, yes. <laughs> Goes up. Is that right, George? A lot of UDL cans? Yes, correct. It's been correct. fact checked. We've had that checked, yeah. Um, but yes, you know, and as a cyclist, it is difficult. These roads are narrow, and you are doing your best to stay over, but it's difficult. You know, there's not always a room, and you are riding in debris. You're going to get flat tyres and things. So are the motorists doing their best, or are they a bunch of... Am I allowed to swear in front of Manny? Oh, f*** <laughs> Are they a bunch... <laughs> are they just being dickheads in their cars? They're being right bunch of pricks, I reckon. Okay, but so Phil had a good analogy. We've I mean, heard from the car... Ro- the well, let's just check with Phil. I mean, bike rider. Phil has a great analogy for what cars it's like to ride dickheads, on a Phil? Road. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm a uh, patron of the Amy Gillett Foundation. Mm. And of course, they've got that uh, campaign they're running, uh, Meter Matters. And so that's uh, giving the cyclists uh, some room. And yeah, the one metre uh, rule has been... Uh, well, actually, it's been passed, I believe, in Canberra. Mm. And it's been trialled in, in uh, well, Queensland, no cars Tasmania, in Canberra, so South Australia. <laughs> no, that's right. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, how do, you, how, how do you measure something like that? How... How do you uh, enforce something like that? You know, one meter. I mean, I know now bicycles are uh, there's quite a few bikes with lights which have cameras uh, within them. So, you know, if it goes to court, you could, you know, it, it could be contested. But uh, you know, what do you do with those with those people? You know, and one of the suggestions which came on on Facebook today was anybody that's been found to be dr- driving uh, dangerously close to a cyclist, which you know, a meter. It's hard to tell. You know what a meter is if it's you know 600 700 or or beyond a meter uh get them to stand on a railway platform on the yellow line when a, an express train comes through and see what it feels like because really when you're on a bike and somebody comes past you uh, a truck or, or a, a cement truck for example <laughs> comes past you that close um yeah it's, it's very uh very unsettling and it and Yes, here, here. And it's a revelation to me. I didn't know anything had been done in Canberra for at least 18 months. So mm. it's it's pleasing pleasing to hear Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's pleasing to hear that. Somebody turned the lights on and did something. Somebody yeah, actually yeah, got great. past. Mm. Now, we actually have a bit of an exclusive. We, As well as having a, two cyclists that ride the Great Ocean Road every day, we've brought in a concrete truck driver who drives the Gradition Road in his concrete truck and has to deal with these skinny little pricks in their raffa gear every day. Ladies and gentlemen, exclusive interview with concrete truck driver, Billy Joe Shearsby. That's many, right, Adam. Many, many talents. Who would have thought you could be on both sides of one argument? How do you go dealing with those skinny well, little... Well, this is how I make sure I win arguments, tri-hearts. by being on both sides. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, those skinny little... F- to get the goddamn hell off the road, that's what I say. No, obviously not. But from the point of view of a truck driver and cyclist, I respect their right to be on the road. In fact, I enjoy seeing cyclists out on the road. Do you know what I don't enjoy? Is when I'm coming around a bend on the Great Ocean Road and a car is coming the other way and he has to step out around riders who are riding two abreast and he is faced with my 24-ton truck and he's halfway in my lane. His it. options are kill a cyclist or have a head-on with me. And that's not a nice thing to, for them to have to choose. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I can see that from both points of view. And while I do believe and I enjoy riding two abreast in a cycling bunch, I don't know that the Great Ocean Road is necessarily the place to do it. Mm. From my point of view, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, this is going to be a world exclusive. I'm going to say a great example can be taken here from the teachings of Charlie Walsh. You heard that first. Wow. He had this thing absolutely correct. He would ride us two abreast. If there was a car coming, we would single out instantly and we would wave them past and the whole bunch would thank the driver as they went past. And thank you. So actually absolutely. give them a wave. 100%. Yep. And, I think and even when the driver looked back at us and went, get the f***, we just kept waving. Mm. And, 
And for the most part, towns that we would revisit year after year would mm. get used to us being there and they would be happy to ride mm. along behind us yeah. as we rode two abreast. And then once we'd single out, they'd go past, they'd give us a beep, beep, yeah. thank you. And, and then we'd go, f***. <laughs> so BJ, as a cyclist and a concrete truck driver, do you ever put your Strava on in the concrete truck and pretend that <laughs> you're... <laughs> I actually don't know how to work Strava and oh. my phone's GPS thing in me what's it with the satellite doesn't work so no i don't know how to, but uh i'm just going to finish this off in a slightly serious mood as a truck driver if i come around a corner and there are yes exactly ooh, if i come around a corner and there's a car coming the other way and he has had to go wide around a group of cyclists i don't have an option or vice versa if i'm waiting patiently to go around a group of riders i start going around and a car comes the other way I don't want to have a head-on with a car. Mm. I don't want to hit a cyclist. I am a cyclist. We've all got to consider the fact that we're all just people waiting to go home to mm. our families. And this is the most serious we've ever got on the bike lane. I have a so, this conversation. So serious, right. so, seri mm. so serious that we actually put Manny to sleep. Well, here at Full Cycle, we very, very rarely get <laughs> this serious. 